Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm getting ready to get into my Sabbath here, and um, I want to share again with you from Randy Alcorn's book, Heaven. And um, right now, I'm pretty much in agreement with Brother Stu Weber, who says, other than the Bible itself, this may well be the single most life-changing book you'll ever read. And uh, so far, Stu, I have to say amen. Another question here for us to consider this morning. It's, I'm, I'm hooded up because it's a little chilly here. It's, uh, I'm, I'm almost ashamed to say it's cold when I'm uh, sitting here and the sun is, is rising and shining bright and it's about uh, 55 degrees maybe here. And then on the, on the other coast, it's about 55 degrees <laughs> wind chill below zero wind chill factor so uh <clears throat> i'm thanking god for the the beauty of this bright crisp southern california morning but the question this morning comes from chapter 33 what will our daily lives be like you know we're just uh, thinking about heaven dreaming about heaven um <clears throat> allowing randy alcorn to just take us you know, into God's word for a a closer, more intimate, more exhilarating look at this place called heaven. What will our daily lives be like? Chapter 33. Puritan pastor Richard Baxter's 1649 book, The Saints Everlasting Rest, was the most influential book on heaven ever written. Baxter marveled that we don't set everything else aside to consider heaven and make sure we're going there. But somehow, heaven hasn't captured our imaginations or shaped our lives. What a pity. What will life in heaven really be like? What does scripture say we'll actually do in our eternal home? Will we rest? When God created the world, he rested on the seventh day, Genesis 2 and verse 2. That's the basis for the biblical Sabbath, when all people and animals rested, Exodus 29 through 11. God set aside days and weeks of rest, and he even rested the earth itself every seventh year. Leviticus 25, verses 4 through 5. This is the rest we can anticipate on the new earth. Times of joyful praise and relaxed fellowship. Real chillaxing, as I call it. Just chilling and relaxing. Our lives in heaven will include rest, Hebrews 4, 1 through 11. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them, Revelation 14, 13. Eden is a picture of rest, work that's meaningful and enjoyable, abundant food, a beautiful environment, unhindered friendship with Yahuwah, with God, and other people and animals, even with Eden's restful perfection, one day was set aside for special rest and worship. Work will be refreshing on the new earth, yet regular rest will be built into our lives. Part of our inability to appreciate heaven as a place of rest relates to our failure to enter into a weekly day of rest now. By rarely turning attention from our responsibilities, we fail to anticipate our coming deliverance from the curse to a full rest. By rarely turning attention from our responsibilities, we fail to anticipate our coming deliverance from the curse to a full rest. Hebrews 4.11, the Bible says, make every effort to enter 
that rest. It's ironic that it takes such effort to set aside time for rest, but it does. For me, Randy says, and for many of us, it's difficult to guard our schedules, but it's worth it. I thank God that I, after these long years, finally discovered that. The day of rest points us to heaven and to Yeshua, Jesus, who said, come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, verse 28. What feels better than putting your head on the pillow after a hard day's work? Imagine about what it will feel, how about what it will feel like after a hard life's work? It's good to sit back and have a glass of iced tea, feel the sun on your face, or tilt back in your recliner and close your eyes. You know what? I think I'm going to just do that right now. It just sounds good. So I'm going to take a cup of my sip of my coffee here that's not too hot anymore. Still tastes good. So it's good to sit back and have a glass of iced tea, a cup of hot coffee, and feel the sun on your face. Or tilt back in your recliner and close your eyes. It's good to have nothing to do but read a good book or take your dog for a walk, or listen to your favorite music, and tell God how grateful you are for his kindness. Rest is good. So good that God built it into his creation and in his law. Some people thrive on social interaction. Others are exhausted by it. Some love solitude, others don't. On the new earth, we'll likely all welcome the lively company of others, but also crave times of restful solitude. We'll enjoy both. We catch glimpses of being able to enjoy both work and rest at once. Randy says, I used to feel this when body, mind, and the beauty around me sometimes quote, kicked in on a 10-mile run. I've experienced the same thing bicycling when I felt I could ride forever and the pedaling I was doing was part of a great rest. I can be working intently at something I love, yet find the rest, find the work restful and refreshing. Yahuwah, the Creator God, rested on the seventh day. Before sin entered the world, he prescribed rest for sinless Adam and Eve, and he prescribed it for those under the curse of sin. Regular rest will be a part of the life to come in the new, new universe. Wouldn't it be wise to learn how to rest now? and especially discover the rest that's found in the promise made by Yeshua, the Messiah. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And he says, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Labor, brothers and sisters, to enter into that rest. Boy, the sun feels good on my face. I'm gonna sit here, listen to the birds chirp and sing, and just rest in his goodness, in his kindness his mercy. Shabbat Shalom.